Spinosaurs are super wacky. They have some of the most interesting anatomies of the carnivorous theropod dinosaurs. They have the worst fossil record and were some of the largest meat-eating landlubbers to ever live. Despite all that, they are still missing from a handful of countries and continents where they should theoretically be. None are known from North America, none from Antarctica, and none from Australia. Well, that was until a funny little vertebra was found that may hold the key to a whole new look at Mesozoic Australian fauna. There's a lot of things we now know about the distant past that seemed impossible only a few decades ago. Discovering the colors of fossilized animals, fragments of collagen and dinosaur bones, and even finding near-complete remains of previously enigmatic animals like Dinochylus and Spinosaurus. But there's still a lot of things we don't know, and never will. The fossil record is a spotty and broken mess, very incomplete. Even as we answer some questions, others remain frustratingly unanswered, and even more questions are raised. Evolution, missing links, behavior, coloration, all will be explored on Paleo Mysteries. The vast majority of the Spinosaur fossil record are all from the early and late Cretaceous epochs. Not much is known about their evolution or their diversification from their relatives. The majority of work done on these dinosaurs has found them to be most closely related to the Megalosaurs. At some point in time, some diverged and began adapting more to riverine and lacustrine environments. The oldest known possible Spinosaur is Ostafricosaurus from the late Jurassic of Tanzania, represented only by fossil teeth. Since it's just teeth, no one can be sure of what it looked like and how far it deviated from the Megalosaur body plan or how Spinosaur-like it was. This fossil record, though very fragmentary and very much open to change, indicates that the Spinosaurs as a whole originated either in Africa or in Europe. The European Spinosaur fossil record is the most diverse, complete, and well-studied, with only a few standout examples from North Africa. There are also some good specimens from Brazil, but not from the rest of South America. Those Brazilian fossils also happen to come from a time when South America and Africa were far closer together than they are today. This may lend some insight into why there are no Spinosaurs yet known from North America, Antarctica, or Australia. Australia and Antarctica were merged together until they began to separate from Africa and India in the Permian and Triassic periods, with Antarctica and Australia rifting from one another in the Jurassic. This separation continued into the Cretaceous, but by that time they had fully separated. This means there was a chance for protospinosaurs to be on those continents before they had begun to isolate. That being said, if they had hitched a ride on Antarctica and Australia and diverged into their own forms of weird spinosaurs, then why have none of their remains ever been found? Some leeway can be given to a lack of them in Antarctica due to the hardships of recovering fossils from the continent. They may still be there in some late Jurassic and early Cretaceous rocks waiting to be found, but that is utter speculation and is unlikely given what there is to work with. Australia, on the other hand, has plenty of early Cretaceous rocks and plenty of people looking for the fossils within them, and yet nothing. However, one tantalizing clue was found by Michael Cleland and George Casper at the Eric the Red West site east of Victoria's Cape Otway Lighthouse in Crayfish Bay in 2005. It was then painstakingly prepared at Museum Victoria and described and published in the Biology Letters Journal by Paul Barrett, Roger Benson, Thomas Rich, and Patricia Vickers Rich in 2011. This specimen is of a neck vertebra of a juvenile theropod dinosaur. It was recovered from the Umarala Formation of the Otway Group, which dates to the late Aptian to early Albion ages of the early Cretaceous Epoch so about 113 to 100 million years ago or so. This 4 centimeter long neck vertebra, specimen NMV P221081, is missing the neural arch and some other major bits, but the team that described it found that those bits that were preserved most closely resembled the anatomy of the neck vertebrae of Baryonyx, one of the most well-known spinosaurs. 
Indeed, the team found that the anatomy of the bone, plus the phylogenetic software that was used to identify the bone, found that it most likely belonged to some sort of spinosaur of uncertain affinities that was most closely related to Siamosaurus of Thailand and Ichthyovenator of Laos. If this is true, it would mean a lot for the paleobiogeography and evolution of the Spinosaurs. Three hypotheses have been made to explain the Cretaceous fragmentation of Gondwana. One is an initial separation of Africa from the rest of Gondwana. This is the Africa First model. The second is that a split between a conjoined South American and African continent and the remaining Gondwanan fragments. This is the Semafrica model. Third is an almost simultaneous separation of all Gondwanan continents, the Pan-Gondwana model. Some researchers have used the shared presence of the Megaraptors in South America and Australia to support a continuous faunal interchange between the Eastern and Western Gondwanan or Southern Hemisphere continents in the early Cretaceous. These researchers reject the Semafrica model and suggest that South America, Antarctica, and Australia remained connected to each other for a while into the early Cretaceous. Other researchers, on the other hand, made broad-scale comparisons using Sorensen's Similarity Index, which measures the overlap between two populations by taking the ratio of the number of species shared between the two populations relative to the number of species in both populations. These researchers found that the Semafrica model could not be rejected, but that the Australian dinosaur fauna was most similar to that from South America, with major differences between the faunas of Laurasia and Gondwana, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere continents, respectively. Other experts have criticized this Sorensen's Similarity Index method for being inappropriate for distinguishing paleobiogeographic hypotheses, as it does not take group history into account but looks at distributions within a single time slice. As a result, it's not clear whether similarities detected by Sorensen's similarity indexes reflect genuine paleobiogeographic signals or convergent evolution caused by regional extinction, earlier geographic isolation, or geodispersal. This test is strongly dependent on the number of groups compared, so that sampling issues like collection effort or amount of available fossil stuffed rock in different regions can have a strong influence on the result. Poorly sampled areas might wrongly appear either highly similar or totally dissimilar to a well-sampled area, because sampling failure is interpreted as genuine group absence. There is also no taxonomic equivalency in the groups selected. Some represent diverse groups, while others are far less diverse. These arbitrary taxonomic divisions can bias the results, as they can mask the true levels of underlying species richness. Finally, there are several instances in which the presence or absence scores used in this analysis contradict existing taxonomic accounts. For example, there are currently no known stegosaurs from the North or South American Cretaceous. With that out of the way, the team that described the Spinosaur vertebra figured that a Spinosaur in Australia meant that more dinosaur groups were present across more continents and over more time than previously thought. The vertebra seriously put a damper on the traditional divide assumed between groups of dinosaurs between the north and south. However, the story takes a little turn here. Turns out this single vertebra is not from a Spinosaur at all. It belonged to a group that was endemic to Australia, the Megaraptors. A 2019 paper by Stephen Poropat, Matt White, Patricia Vikers Rich, and Thomas Rich, published in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology, reanalyzed already described theropod fossils and described some new ones from the Eric the Red West dig site. Among the collection of bones they reanalyzed was the Spinosaurid vertebra. In their analysis, now aided from a bunch of new Spinosaur and Megaraptor discoveries, this team found that the little vertebra much more readily compares to the vertebra of Megaraptor and dinosaurs. That pretty much solves this paleo mystery, except that there is still no idea what this Eumerala Megaraptor looked like, how it lived, or whether it was the same as ones that already have been described. A mystery within a mystery. The Umarala formation of which this critter lived was comprised of mudstones, siltstones, and sandstones. The combination of rock makes scientists think this region was a vast floodplain, a very dense delta. 
wide strings of river systems, swamplands, and a majority of shallow lakes, the common habitat that generally housed Spinosaurids and is why it was initially believed to have been one. Oh well, another hope of early or weird Spinosaurs dashed. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.